Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me here today, and thank you to the organizing committee for including this work in the program. Um, today, I'm going to be sharing with you the results from a systematic review and meta-analysis that we uh, did to explore the associations between fruit and its sources um, on cardiovascular disease incidents and outcomes. And I just realized that some of my introduction slides overlap with Dr. Stephen Piper's talk, but uh, I'm not that experienced to change things on a whim, so just go with me, please. <laughs> Um, I have no relevant conflict of interest in regards to this particular presentation. So when we think about dietary patterns for cardiovascular disease risk reduction, such as the DASH and the Mediterranean diet, we see a consistent emphasis on increased fruit consumption. And based on benefits associated with food intake, eating plenty of fruit is one of the five keys in the WHO's keys to uh, a healthy diet, as well as is found in uh, the dietary guidelines of over 60 countries worldwide. However, the rise, um, has, the, the rise in obesity has raised concerns about the sugar content in the diet and um, has raised concerns as to the extent to which fruit uh, should be emphasized and which of its sources should be recommended as part of a healthy dietary pattern. And the International Diabetes Federation uh, put out their position in 2015 on uh, ways to reduce sugar in the diet. And this has um, deferred dietary guidelines from recommending certain uh, certain sources of fruits, such as fruit juice and dried fruits, due to their sugar content. As well, we see this in the public eye, where there's been several physician opinions that highlight um, the concerns with uh, fruit in the diet, such as, is fruit still part of a healthy diet? Should we drop the apple and walk away? Stating that uh, juice is really not healthy, and is it possible that we're really having too much fruit? And I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, several systematic reviews and meta-analyses that have explored the associations between fruit and, uh, and its sources on cardiovascular disease outcomes. However, uh, many of them have not assessed the quality of their findings using the GRADE approach, which um, can be argued is necessary to be able to uh, input this evidence in the public health policies. As well, several of them have uh, not explored different food sources comparisons, as well have not divided CBD incidence versus mortality outcomes. <coughs> And lastly, but importantly, there's consistently new observations that are available, such as the PURE cohort, which can help strengthen the associations that we've uh, found before. So our objective in this work was to synthesize the evidence from prospective cohorts to explore the associations between fruit and its sources with uh, incident and uh, cardiovascular disease mortality outcomes. Um, so this is the systematic review and meta-analyses methods, which I know we've uh, presented several times before, and I've polled some people, and some people don't care to listen to it too much, so I'm going to go through it really fast. So um, we followed the Cochrane Handbook and reported results according to PRISMA. We searched three databases, and these were our search terms. This is a project that also includes the um, exploring vegetable sources, but today we'll be focusing only on fruits. We included all prospective cohorts that had at least a one-year follow-up, and we excluded any, ex uh, any cohorts that looked at fruit nutrient exposures only or dietary patterns, as well as uh, any that reported only on secondary prevention outcomes. Rani and I both uh, extracted the data, and these are... <laughs> And uh, these are all the characteristics we got from the studies, as well as we assess each study for risk of bias using the Newcastle-Ottawa scale. Um, we used RevMan for our primary analysis. Our, our primary interest was uphold relative risk, uh, um, relative risk estimates of the extreme quantiles of fruit consumption on cardiovascular disease outcomes. We also used data to explore the data for secondary analyses, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some of the dose response analyses for which we modeled the data using both linear and nonlinear models when the data permitted us to do so. And we, um, we assessed the certainty of the evidence using the GRADE tool. So given that cohorts have some inherent limitations, they do start off at a grade of low, uh, with low certainty in the evidence, and this can be upgraded due to a dose response to moderate, or it can be downgraded for those five factors listed below. For this particular meta-analysis, we'll see some downgrades in regards to inconsistency of the results and imprecision due to, um, due to very, very limited amounts of cohorts for food sources. So on to the results. Um, the literature was just updated on June 3rd, so it's been a really sleep-deprived couple weeks for me, but I'm happy to share it with you today. So we identified just nearly 4,300 uh, publications, 
from which 113 were deemed eligible to, um, to be included in this analysis. This encompassed 80 cohorts, as well as just over 4 million individuals and with a mean age of 55 years old and a follow-up year, um, or follow-up time of uh, 11 years. There were a relatively large number of events reported and the cohort spanned worldwide, with the majority coming from the United States of America and the UK. So this is the fruit of my labor, and you'll see here um, our super plot, which illustrates um, fruit incidents. So we see fruit incidents, CHD incidents, and stroke incidents, and the total fruit being here at the top bolded, and then the fruit sources. And then the following column was the cohort that's included in the analysis, the number of individuals, number of events, and the pooled uh, risk estimates from comparing the highest quantile to the lowest quantile of fruit consumption. And then lastly, you'll see the results from the grade assessment. So I'm just gonna highlight for you um, the associations that were significant. So we see a significant reduction from a higher intake of fruit in all three CVD incidence outcomes with a 9% risk reduction following um, a high fruit consumption in CVD incidence, um, a 12% in CHD incidence, and a 17% the highest in stroke incidence. And this, uh, this evidence was graded for the most part from low to moderate, which were able to be upgraded, all of which for a dose response. However, some of them had some imprecision because they crossed the the 95% um, the um, relative risk reduction, which is um, the minimally important difference. We also saw uh, significant improvements from um, increased citrus consumption, which is great for, for Spain. You'll see that um, they'll have larger uh, CBD incidence reductions. As well, we saw it in apples as well. So palms includes both apples and pears, and it's the way it's most frequently reported in FFQs. Now, this is our CVD uh, mortality outcomes. So again, outlined the same way. And we see improvements, again, across the board from a higher intake of fruit. And these range from a 17% reduction in CVD mortality and very similar in CHD mortality. And we see the largest reduction being in stroke mortality at 21%. The largest uh, protective association, rather. And then, again, in citrus, we see a very protective association as well in CHD and stroke mortality. And then in palms, in CVD mortality and in CHD mortality. And we also see this for fruit juice and for stroke mortality, where we see a protective association. However, please note, though, that, again, the fruits were graded slightly higher and they stayed at low due to the fact that we were able to identify a dose-response analysis, so even we were able to upgrade even though we had to downgrade due to unexplained inconsistency. However, all the fruit sources were graded as very low, and that's because of the limited amount of data and the fact that these values can be very inconsistent or imprecise. I did want to share with you some dose-response data. So this is um, the dose response graph that we already saw in Dr. Stephen Piper's talk, and it's looking at total fruit consumption and CVD incidents. And this, this particular analysis included 11 cohorts and just over 2.2 uh, million person years. And the linear model is uh, represented by straight lines, and the nonlinear model is represented by the dotted less straight lines. <laughs> um, and then I've highlighted here, too, the risk reduction that we'll get per serving of, um, of fruit, as well as if there was any departure from linearity from our nonlinear analysis. So when we look at CVD incident, CHD incident, and stroke incident, none of them had any departure from linearity. And we see overall a relative risk reduction in these incidence outcomes uh, ranging from 3 to 8% per serving of fruit, with the highest being in stroke incidence. Now, when we look at CVD mortality outcomes, we see that they all show a nonlinear, um, uh, they prefer to have a nonlinear model. And looking at CVD mortality in particular, we'll see that there's a plateau at about five servings per day with a relative risk reduction in CV, CVD mortality just over 20%. And then we see this plateau changing for CHD mortality, where it's at about two servings per day and a risk reduction of about just 10%. And it's very similar when we look over here in, uh, in stroke mortality as well. And lastly, I just quickly wanted to share the dose response for fruit juice. So you can see that a nonlinear relationships cannot be modeled for incident outcomes, which, as Dr. Stephen Piper has already highlighted, can really help to um, help us define the relationship between fruit juice and, and uh, cardiovascular disease outcomes. 
And this is really because there's limited cohorts that explore dose response and it doesn't let us to, um, to look any further. And this is a challenge that we also saw when we looked at cardiovascular disease mortality outcomes. So in conclusion, a higher fruit consumption is associated with significant risk reductions in all CVD and incident outcomes, with reductions ranging from 9% being in CVD incidents and the highest being a 21% protective association with stroke mortality. Um, and citrus, palms, and fruit juice were the only fruit sources that were associated with reduction in CVD incidence and mortality outcomes. However, it's important to note that our certainty in this evidence is very low to low due to the limited number of comparisons that we have for this data. Thank you.